Condensed structure formulas are very useful because they give you an impression of the structure of a molecule. However, when you have a very big molecule or a very complicated molecule, it can be very difficult to capture the structure in a condensed structure formula. For those cases, we like to use a line structure, which is a graphical representation of the molecular structure. For this condensed structural formula, the corresponding line structure is drawn as follows. And in doing so, we assume the following two rules. Each endpoint of a line and each corner represents a carbon atom. We don't explicitly write C, but we assume that each corner and each endpoint is a carbon atom. In order to keep the structure clean, we leave out all the hydrogens that are bonded to carbons. So, this structure here definitely has hydrogen atoms, but we do not draw them. We assume that there are enough of them such that each carbon atom has four bonds, because that is a criterion we have to fulfill. An example where a condensed structural formula fails to represent the structure is benzene. Benzene is a ring, stru ring structure, which is really hard to write in a condensed structural formula. However, the line structure is very clear. In this line structure, each corner is a carbon atom. Each carbon atom must have four bonds, which means each carbon atom here has one hydrogen atom to fulfill that rule. Let's try to draw the line structures of more complicated molecules. Here is an example. In this condensed structure formula, from left to right, we read the following. A CH3 unit in the line structure represented as an endpoint. A CH2 unit, another CH2 unit, Note that each of these CH2 units are represented by a corner point. The hydrogens are not indicated. The next carbon atom is bonded to two chlorines, which are indicated. The chlorines are indicated because they're not hydrogens. Only the hydrogens are left out. Next, a CH2 unit, and then a C bonded to a hydrogen and doubly bonded to an oxygen atom. Another structure. Here, from left to right, we can read the following. A CH3, remember, an endpoint. A CH2, a corner point, another CH2. Then a carbon bonded to a fluorine and a hydrogen. The hydrogen is not indicated, but the fluorine is. Then a CH2 unit, another CH2 unit, and then a carbon bonded to a nitrogen. It's a triple bond, because if we want to fulfill the rule that each carbon must have four bonds, we have to add three bonds between the carbon and the nitrogen. This structure can be drawn as follows. We see from left to right a CH3 unit, a CH and a CH. Note that this is a double bond. Then another CH2 unit, a C bonded to a chlorine and a hydrogen, but only the chlorine is indicated. And then finally an endpoint all the way to the right, which is a CH3 unit. From the line structures, we can also determine the molecular formula. In doing so, we have to count the number of atoms of each element. So, let's start with, a, with the example all the way to the left. This structure has a total of four carbon atoms, so we write C4. It has a total of eight hydrogen atoms that are bonded to a carbon. It has one more, a hydrogen atom bonded to an oxygen, so a total of nine hydrogens, so C4H9. We also see it has one oxygen and one chlorine atom. So the total molecular formula here is C4H9, oxygen and chlorine. The second structure has a total of four carbon atoms. Each of these carbon atoms has two hydrogens attached to it. So that's a total of eight, but it has one more hydrogen that is bonded to the nitrogen. The total number of hydrogen atoms in this structure is nine. It also has one oxygen and one nitrogen. The last structure, all the way to the right, has a total of nine carbon atoms. How many hydrogen atoms does it have? Well, let's count. Let's start to the right. The final group here is the CH3 group. It has three uh, hydrogens attached to it. The next carbon, to the left, has two hydrogens, followed by a carbon that has only one. The next carbon has two, and then we see two more hydrogens attached to oxygens if we go along the ring. Below we see a carbon atom that has three bonds, plus one hydrogen, 
and then a CH3 group right below it, containing three hydrogen atoms. Finally, there's a carbon atom with two hydrogens attached. If you add up all these hydrogens, you will count a number of 16. This structure also has two more oxygens in its structure. The final molecular formula, therefore, is C9H16, oxygen 2. Let's finish this segment by practicing a few more line structures. And let's determine the molecular formulas of the following line structures. The first line structure here has a total of six carbon atoms. How many hydrogens does it have? I see five hydrogens on the ring and an extra one bound to the oxygen. So that's six hydrogens in total. It also has one oxygen. So this is C6, H6, and one oxygen. The second structure, if you count the number of corner points, you'll find eight carbon atoms. How many hydrogens does this structure have? Here we see a total of six. Now note that these two corner points, these two carbons, do not have a hydrogen attached to them because they already have four bonds. The structure also has an oxygen in its structure. The total structure here, the molecular formula, is C8H6 oxygen. The last structure has a total of seven carbon atoms indicated here by the circles. We find a total of six hydrogen atoms. Note that there is a hydrogen atom on the nitrogen. We have to count that one too. It also has two more nitrogens in its structure. So the total molecular formula for this particular structure is C7H6N2.